let's take somebody who has done windmills and has had some hard time with it. Let's see what you can do, Charlie. Okay, park the bell. Set it down. Thank you. Not bad, really, not bad. Guys, what I want you to watch for, I want you to see everything that I'm going to do right now, you can recognize from the previous stretches. Absolutely everything. Okay, so tell me exactly what can you pick out. All right, here's the kettlebell. The stance, this foot is slightly turned in. This leg is somewhat soft. But watch, what exactly am I doing right now? Yeah, I'm lifting my hip. See, this gets, this gets lifted. I'm getting my spine long, and am I separating my arms apart? Then squeeze the glute and get back up. Okay. Okay. Lock the elbow. Good. This time, can you do another one? Yeah. Or, or is the shoulder tired? Oh, uh, the whole thing, whole left side is tired. Okay, do it the other way. Okay. Mm -hmm. the right side. So use strength to get down, Charlie. Really lift the hip, push it way out and high, and lengthen your spine. And squeeze the glute to get back up. Excellent. Now put it down. Now we'll do one more rep. This time, this foot is going to stay pointed in slightly. Why do you want to keep this foot pointed in, guys? Could you do a windmill like this with your feet forward? Yeah, you could. It's a good exercise for a different reason. It's good for spine mobility, shoulder mobility. But here, amongst other things, what we're trying to do is we could try to stretch. There's a small muscle right here on the top of your butt called piriformis that does this. When this muscle gets tight, then we start walking like this. Who has tight piriformis? <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> if you do a lot of splits, you'll get tight piriformis. If you do a lot of kicks, if you do a lot of power lifts, if you do a lot of kettlebells, if you don't, don't do anything, you get tight piriformis. So you want to stretch that muscle. If the muscle's function is this, then how do we stretch it? You want to put it in the opposite, right? So you want to have your foot somewhat in. This one is just for a ride. See the way it's soft. But this is slightly in. You're just lifting the hip. And you should feel it right here. That's what you're trying to stretch. Let's do it. So turn. There we go. All your weight on the left. So lift the hip. Keep lifting the hip. Keep the weight on the left. Now squeeze the glute and get back up, keeping the weight on the left. That's enough. Good. How does it feel? Better. Yeah. Did you feel it? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Please sit down. So even most complex move, like the windmill, it's not that difficult once you have the basics of flexibility dialed in. You may hold a kettle, unless you are experienced with kettlebells, you may hold the kettlebell down below, so it'll be like this, you know, you'd be going this way, or you could do it with no weight whatsoever, which would be my preferred way for you to practice right now. So you're gonna shift your weight on the outside of your foot. Notice I told you not to rock on the outside of the foot in the squat, here you may, and even should. And lift the hip, because we also stretch right here as well. And kind of poke yourself here, you see? Poke yourself here. So the hip lifts up. And as you go, you see the spine gets longer and turns at the same time. There is no torsion. There's no twisting. It's not like simultaneous bend and turn. No. It just gets long and turns. While the hip comes up, separate the arms. Keep your weight on the back leg. Squeeze the glute. Get back up. Now tell me what am I doing wrong right now? 
No, let's see. Forget my arm. Just, um, just forget my arm for the time being. I'm going to this. What you're doing is a weird lunge. So you yoga people, this is not trikonasana. The weight distribution is not 50-50. The weight's on the back leg, and it's straight. This leg is soft. Lift it up. Lift, lift, lift. Enjoy. 